Welcome to another episode of NAF Australia's Israeli election preview. While the campaign leading up to April's election was filled with speculation, this campaign has been far more about consolidation and continuation. All the party lists have now been finalised and fewer parties will contest the September election compared to April's. So we're starting to get a better idea of who might make it into the Knesset and we can break it down into roughly six broad camps. Firstly, the joint Arab list. Running as four separate parties in April's election resulted in one of the lowest turnouts in the Arab sector in recent years. Ayman Ode, head of the Khadash faction, will once more lead the joint list. He'll be hoping to bring turnout back to the level of 2015's election. They should get about 10 to 12 seats running on a combined ticket. Secondly, the Zionist left, which has two major parties. Labour, which is running with the Geshe party, which is right wing on security, but left wing on social and economic issues. And secondly, the Democratic Union, headed by new merits leader Nitzan Horowitz and former Prime Minister and Defence Minister Ehud Barak, which says it will lead the defence of liberal democratic values in Israel. Labour is teetering perilously close to the electoral threshold, and you'd expect them to get four or five seats, while the Democratic Union should get about eight or nine. Next, the blue and white party in the centre, led by former IDF Chief of Staff Benny Gantz and former Finance Minister and Journalist Yair Lapid. They were the great hope of the last election, receiving just one fewer seat than Netanyahu's Likud. Their party is made up of a bunch of one-time allies of Netanyahu, including his former communications director and his former defence minister, as well as left-wing figures like former Histad Rut boss Avi Nissenkorn. The latest polls show them getting about 30 seats. On the right, Likud is still backing Benjamin Netanyahu as leader, despite an upcoming hearing on those three corruption charges. This election Likud slate also includes the Kulanu party, led by Finance Minister Moshe Kachlan. Likud is still leading the polls at around 30 to 31 seats. Also on the right is Avigdor Lieberman's Israel Beitainu party, the catalyst for the election do-over. He caused Netanyahu major headaches when he received five seats in the last election. This time, having increased his cachet by standing up to the ultra-Orthodox parties, it looks like he could double his representation. Further to the right is the new United Right Party, led by former Justice Minister Ayelet Shaked. The party is running as a merger of the new Right Party, which she formerly led in partnership with former Education Minister Naftali Bennett, as well as their old Jewish Home Party. They're polling at around 11 seats. Last time, the far-right Jewish supremacist Kahanas party, Otzma Yehudit, ran with them, but this time they're standing on their own and it looks like they won't pass the 3.25% threshold. Lastly, the ultra-Orthodox parties Shas and United Torah Judaism, both polling around six or seven seats each. Those numbers would be slightly down on April's election, possibly having leaked votes to the United Right. As you can see, there's been a few shifts between the factions. The right has bled some seats to the far right, although internally there's also been a realignment from Likud towards Avigdor Lieberman's party. The centre has lost some ground to the Zionist left, and the Arab parties have also grown, although that's probably more a function of predicted turnout rather than getting votes from any of the other sectors. And now we can take a look at some of the options for coalition makeups. After he scuttled Netanyahu's negotiations in April and sent Israelis back to the polls, Avigdor Lieberman has been saying he'll push for a unity government between himself, Likud, and the blue and white centrist party, presumably with some kind of rotating prime ministership. As you can see at the moment, that's really the only grouping able to form a coalition. Netanyahu made the Likud list sign a pledge of loyalty to keep him as leader. But will Benny Gantz even sit with him while those corruption charges are pending? On their own, the centre and left, as well as the right, far right and ultra-orthodox, wouldn't have the numbers to form a government. The Arab parties have never been part of a formal coalition in Israel. After the election, there are a good few weeks where one party will get the chance to broker coalition deals. If that fails, other parties will each have a chance to make it work until a government is formed. The battle lines have now been drawn between the parties contesting the 17th of September election. We'll keep you updated over the next few weeks as the campaign really gets into full swing. We've already seen some changes in campaigning, including from Benjamin Netanyahu, who has elevated both Vladimir Putin and Narendra Modi into his advertising. Remember to keep watching Facebook and Twitter for more regular updates, and we'll see you again soon.